Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Today I want to talk about tri-band mesh networking and to do that I'm going to be using the Mikrotik Audience which is a tri-band uh, mesh networking setup and we're going to learn about the difference between mesh networking and simple uh, Wi-Fi uh, repeaters, Wi-Fi range extenders and to see what you can do with a mesh network that you can't do with a much more simpler equipment. So if you want to find out more, please well, let me explain. So I hope you've had a chance to watch my video about Wi-Fi extenders and how they really work. That really is good background information will help you understand what we're talking about in this video. I won't repeat much of the information, so if something doesn't seem clear to you, best to check out that other video. Today we're going to be concentrating on tri-band mesh networking and why having that third band is really important. Now before we get into that, let's look at the four advantages of having mesh networking as compared to a simple Wi-Fi range extender. So the first big difference is the fact that you can have a backhaul connection and we're going to talk more about that in detail, but a way for the different nodes in the mesh network to be able to communicate with each other. The second thing that is important in a mesh network, you can have multiple nodes and those nodes are aware of each other in the terms that they can route traffic through the best route back to the original uh, modem or router that gets you onto the internet or access to the rest of your LAN network and they can work together in a kind of as a group rather than each one just being individual and just blindly kind of rebroadcasting or transmitting data the, in a mesh network, they can work as a, as a cohesive uh, group together. Which leads to the third point, which is configuration. Because they're working in a group together, because they are aware of each other, because there is intelligent software used for the routing and so on, that same software is also used for configuration. So when you configure the network, you can configure it with just one node that you connect to, and then that node is able to pass on the new information to the other nodes. And the fourth thing that's important about mesh networking, and it's true this is only found in some types of mesh networking, is this idea of fast roaming, the ability to switch from one node to another without any kind of interruption. So let's talk about those four points in greater detail, starting with the backhaul. Now the backhaul is the way that the nodes in the network can communicate with each other. Now there are three different types of backhaul system that exist in a mesh network. And the first is, there is no backhaul. There is no dedicated backhaul method at all. And what that means is that the radios inside of the mesh network are used both for talking to the clients and also for talking to the other nodes, including transferring the client data to the different nodes in the network. And that is very similar to what you have in a simple Wi-Fi range extender. One radio has to be able to receive and also has to be able to transmit. And that gives you a problem with bandwidth because it can't do two things at once. Now, you probably have multiple radios because you probably have 2.4 gigahertz support and five gigahertz support inside of your mesh network. And that would mean that it can be a bit cleverer to understand that it can send some data over five gigahertz while it's using the 2.4. But ultimately, if you've got more people using your network, your household has got several people in it, then the, the same channel is being used for the data uh, for between the nodes and for the clients. And that will end up being a bandwidth bottleneck. Now the second type of backhaul, uh, and this will overcome this network bottleneck, is to have wired connections. So each node in your mesh network actually has a wire running between it, an ethernet cable. And therefore, when the data is sent, let's say you've got a smartphone, you're streaming a video, it goes to the node in the mesh network. Then the next hop of the journey, the next stage of the journey, goes over a wire between the different nodes in the mesh network and then ultimately arrives at the router or modem that gives you access to the internet or to the rest of your LAN. Now, of course, that's great and that gives you brilliant performance, but of course, one of the reasons why you're probably using a mesh network is that you don't have ethernet cables all over your house. You don't have that kind of infrastructure which allows you to connect. And otherwise, if you did, you may not have even bothered to use a mesh network. You may have used different uh, uh, ideas like just connecting an access point in another room over the uh, ethernet connection. So although that's a great way of getting a uh, good bandwidth, you probably aren't doing it for that reason. You've probably bought mesh network because you want to go wireless completely. And the third way to handle the backhaul problem is to use a dedicated radio. So the Mikrotik audience is a tri-band. 
So it has three different radios in it. Now, the first radio is for the 2.4 gigahertz network, so 8211G, uh, N, and so on. Then there's a second radio for five gigahertz, so 8211A uh, and AC. And then there's a second five gigahertz network, which is separate to the other two, which is dedicated just so the nodes can talk to each other. And what that means, if I'm connecting to a local node, with my smartphone, I'm streaming a video, for example. When that node then wants to talk to the next node, it won't be using the same five gigahertz radio that the smartphone is talking to the node. Because if it did, it would have to switch between sending and receiving, sending and receiving, receiving and sending the data from the smartphone and then sending it on to the next node. And of course that cuts the bandwidth in half. So instead it has a third radio dedicated just for talking to the other nodes. So now I've got great bandwidth coming through to my smartphone and there's a separate channel backhaul that's being used to talk to the other nodes in the network and that's great for bandwidth in fact we're going to show you some of my bandwidth testing that I've done and it's absolutely amazing when you see I had to double check my numbers because it really has a great effect on the overall bandwidth of the system now before we get into that bandwidth testing let's quickly look at the other three points i made the second one being that of course there are multiple nodes so when you've got a simple wi-fi extender it's just broadcasting blindly it's not aware of any other extenders around it there could be one in the next room it doesn't care it just transmits now when you've got a mesh network they understand what they're doing and they are controlled centrally from the main mesh uh, network controller and it's able to understand the best route to any particular node. It's able to understand which one is busy because it's got a lot of load onto it, switch to a different path. If one of them is no longer connected to the power, the data can be rerouted. So the smartness of being a mesh network means that they are able to work together uh, as one uh, network and they aren't just blindly doing each one his own thing. It's a team. So this is a team rather than a single player. So since they are working together as a team, it means that you can have some really quite strange topologies. That's kind of the way you arrange your network. So you can have outlying nodes, you can have nodes two or three that are maybe closer to each other. And the network won't just try to route things all the way around all of the different nodes and finally get back to the main router. It understands, well, just one hop here will get me to that client with his, you know, the smartphone streaming the video. I don't have to worry about going out to that one uh, at the extremities. It can be intelligent in the way that it routes that information around. So because all those nodes are playing together as one team, not only is the data being routed intelligently around the different nodes in the network, also the configuration information can be sent around the different nodes in the network. So for example, using the Mikrotik audience, I wanted to change the Wi-Fi password. So using the app that they've got on a uh, smartphone, Android and iOS, I was able to connect to the uh, main node and I was able to change the Wi-Fi password and that information then trickled its way through to the other nodes in the network. I didn't have to go to each node and reconfigure it and change it and test it. It just worked because it's central management. So that's a great thing, particularly if you've got if you've got one or two, okay, but if you start getting three, four of these things, then it would be really handy to be able to manage it all from a central point, and that's what you can do. And the final point is seamless switching between the nodes. Now, if you remember from my previous video on network extenders, each node is actually its own physical Wi-Fi network with its own BSS ID. And if you don't know what that means, go back, please, and have a look at that other video. Now, when you switch between them, that's normally based on the client device, so your smartphone saying, well, the signal is stronger here than over here, so I'm going to switch. Now, of course, the SSID and the password are the same, so it's able to switch fairly quickly. However, there is a technology that allows you to switch without there being any interruption. And this requires some authentication, keys that are pre-shared, so that, of course, when you connect to the new node, the authentication is already working and it requires support not only in the device, uh, the mesh network, but also in the client device, so in the smartphone. And that's where it gets a bit tricky. iOS kind of supports it. Samsung devices on Android support it. Other Android devices don't really support it. Then, of course, you've got laptops and you've got you know, Windows, Mac OS, and you've got Linux and so on. We're talking about things like 802.11.rkv. Now, if you want a separate video on this fast switching, do tell me in the comments below and I'll think about doing a separate video. But it's not really a coherent technology at the moment. You have to have support. 
everywhere for it really to work. Okay, so now let's look at the advantage of tri-band when it comes to that backhaul and the throughput. Now, similar to when I did my testing using the Wi-Fi extender, I've got uh, the one audience unit here in my office, and we can look at a map in a moment, and then I go around my house trying different combinations to see what effect it has on the bandwidth. Now, let me tell you one thing before we get cracking. I'm going to be talking about uh, percentage differences, so the base will be the speed that I can get right next to the or audience uh, unit connecting to my uh, performance testing, which is here in the LAN, not related to the internet, because that would be unreliable, it's here inside of my house. But the thing to start with is that because this is Wi-Fi 5, in other words, 802.11ac, and it supports, of course, 2.4 gigahertz with uh, N and so on, I was actually getting three and a half times the performance that I was getting just using my normal 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi uh, 11N network. So already just switching to the audience, I was already getting three and a half times the bandwidth by upgrading to this great piece of equipment. Now you'll see in a moment when we go then to extend that using another audience unit, the great things that we have using the uh, tri-band. Okay, so here is that pseudo picture of my house again. And as we can see here, bottom left hand corner is the audience unit and I get 100%, that's the bandwidth baseline here connecting to that. Now, if I move across the hallway into the bedroom and I try to connect back to the original audience, I have a bandwidth now of 69% and that's a drop off because of five gigahertz, of course, going through several walls as a distance and so on. So we're now at 69%. But if I connect in a second audience unit into that room and then it is using its uh, radio to talk back to the first audience unit, I get a throughput of 75%. So it's actually faster using the second audience unit. And this is very different to what we saw when we were using a simple Wi-Fi range extender. Because a Wi-Fi range extender, as I've said, is trying to listen on the radio and talk on the radio the same frequency, 2.4 gigahertz or whatever it's doing, and it can't handle it. But now we've got the, the audience with its tri-band, three bands, it's able to use those radios as it wants to get the best throughput possible. So it's even better than just using my smartphone in that room because the audience itself is able to use that backhaul and it can actually look and say, well, I've got some free bandwidth on 2.4 gigahertz. I've got some free bandwidth on the other five gigahertz channel and it can do its best to give you the best throughput. So just by putting in that second audience unit across the room, I got a faster, higher bandwidth than if I connected just with my smartphone. And that's the key with this. That extra third radio gives you that extra capacity to be able to communicate between the nodes. And so now if we moved up into that room in the top right hand corner and I'm connecting using my smartphone, the bandwidth drops down way down now to 10%. Now, of course, that is quite a low number, but of course it's going five gigahertz. So of course these signals drop off much quicker. Five gigahertz going a long way to the other end of the house to the original audience unit. Now, if I connect to the audience that's connected into that first bedroom, then now this actually bumps up the speed to 27%. And what's interesting is still to remember that that number of 27%, because remember this network was giving me three and a half times more than what I was getting on my, my previous uh, 802.11n uh, network, 2.4 gigahertz n network, that throughput connecting through to that second audience is actually faster than what I was getting on my old network actually next to the router with the phone next to the router. So again, just that three and a half times bump in performance, even when you start to that comes down because of walls and because of distance, I'm still getting much greater bandwidth than I was on my previous device. But there's even something better coming up next. Listen to this. If I then connect a set, an audience unit into that room itself, and then I connect to it, and then it talks over its backhaul and its other radios back to the original audience, I get a throughput of 60%. 60%. So now that I am way, way away, I'm still maintaining a 60% bandwidth. And here again, we see the advantage of the tri-band because that third band 
is there for the two audience units to speak to each other. So while my device is talking to the local unit over five gigahertz, it doesn't have to kind of, you know, multiplex its radio to talking to my smartphone and talking to the other unit. It can talk directly over that third band. And also if there is any other bandwidth available, for example, on the 2.4 gigahertz uh, range, then it can control those radios as it sees fit to get the best kind of performance. So this is very, very different to what we were seeing with just the simple Wi-Fi extender. So I was amazed that at the other end of the house, that I'm actually now still getting 60% of the bandwidth because I have that local audience unit and then the back hall is handling the traffic going back to the original one. So what have we learned? We've learned several things. First of all, having a tri-band mesh networking is way, way more superior than using just a dual band or even a single band mesh networking because they will be forced to use the same radios for both the back hall and for the communicating with the client device. Secondly, we've seen things like the ability to add in two, three, or even more or audience network nodes will allow you to have smart routing and smart uh, uh, configuration. So these things work as a team and not just as an individual hogging the radio waves as they're trying to do their thing, they can work together. And the other thing we've seen is that configuring a mesh network is very easy because they're playing together as a team. When you configure the main node, it is able to pass on that configuration information to the other nodes in the network. So some great advantages, both in terms of performance and in terms of management for using a mesh network, particularly a tri-band mesh network, than using just a simple Wi-Fi extender. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, please do tell me in the comments below. And if you want to see more of my videos, then it's best to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon because not always will the recommendation algorithm tell you about my stuff. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.